All right, so as we're wrapping down the class and preparing for kind of the final exhibit of all the VR work, I wanted to show a little bit of a different teleportation mechanism and uh, some water, which I think a lot of groups are needing. So in this one, I'm using a parabolic teleporter, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Uh, this isn't something that I wrote. This is something that ships with Unreal Engine. We've been using kind of the blank template. You could also use a, a VR template. Um, the VR template has motion controller stuff that's already mapped in, and there's a lot of uh, you know, features that have been built into that that we haven't been using. Um, but in some cases, using parabolic teleport will be good. So what I've done here is I've actually brought those assets in. And to do that, I did add new, um, and then I said add new feature content pack, and then I went to the virtual reality. And th that brought in everything I need. So this file is going to come with everything. And you're going to be able to move this stuff uh, as, as necessary. So if I needed to move the motion controller pawn to my file, that will work. But there's a few things we need to cover. So if I go ahead and preview this in VR and show you a little bit of what it does. Um, what you can see is that the motion controls are actually models of hands, which is kind of cool. Um, if I use the trigger, it will close the hand. And if I use the thumb pad on top of the motion controller, I can see uh, the direction I'm going to teleport, where my room scale is, and here you can see when I turn my head, the orientation I'll be looking once I finish the teleport. So I can jump over there, jump over here. It works with um, either hand. I can use left or right uh, thumb pad to jump around. And one thing you'll notice here is I can teleport through this box, but I can't teleport into that box. They're actually bounded. Um, so we'll show you a little bit of how that works. Let's escape here. Now, I'm still having a couple glitches with this import that when I start the level, it works just fine. But um, if I open another Unreal Engine asset, um, then I have to relaunch this, um, this project for the teleporting to work again, which, which is a little strange. Um, so what you see here is the motion controller pawn. This is something that I'll migrate across. Um, and what you see here, this bounds is a nav mesh bounds volume. So if I came over here and type nav mesh, uh, nav. There we go. Nav. Nav mesh bounds volume. This is what I bring into the scene. I'll delete this one. What this does is it looks for geometry with collisions and it generates an area in which we can teleport. So we had made our own kind of floors and levels for our projects and we set them to have collisions but not to have a materiality. This nav mesh does something very similar. If I press P here in the uh, the view, uh, let's see, it should have a lot more than that. That's strange. The nav mesh should be, there we go. Just had to move it a little bit. What you can see, the nav mesh is, when I press P, I can see the green, and this is the navigable area. This is the spot I can teleport to. This box over here is set up so that it doesn't have collisions, no collisions, so we can teleport right through it. This box here is set up to have default collisions, so you can see the nav mesh has been trimmed out there. So one way this nav mesh might be useful is if we have a level with a ground floor and walls coming down, uh, we could make the walls collidable and uh, then we'd only be able to navigate to uh, areas where the nav mesh is, 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 isn't blocked by the wall. So if you can imagine, let's, let's just take this block for instance, stretch it out and pretend it's a long wall. Now I can't teleport into the wall. Um, so I'm only reliant on the navigation mesh to teleport. I'm not worried about other collisions. Um, all right, and then the other part of this is that we have a water material over here. The water material is here under materials. Uh, this is the master file, which is a pretty complicated one, and there's a lot of different assets and resources that control the size and speed of the waves. Um, but then I was able to right-click and create a materials instance, and this is my CKMCA water. And in here, I'm able to control the speed of the waves, the small ripples, the specular levels. This is something that gets pretty heavy, especially with a lot of reflections. So you have to be careful not to let the CPU or GPU load get too large. I can also change the color of the water. So if I wanted to say that we're kind of more, maybe we go over here in a, a dirty brown color, or orangish. If I save this, then we have a, a different kind of entirely different effect on the water. It's not kind of tranquil blue. Um, but this ripple is caused by the panners. So let's go back and try this one more time. Here, you can see my hands, they're working. I can teleport around. I can't teleport. I cannot teleport to this wall. You can see it's blocking me. 
So that's a little bit of how the nav mesh works. And if I go over and take a look at the water, I can't teleport to the water, but I can get pretty close. All right, so how do we move this stuff? So if I go back to my content, I'm going to go to uh, the, let's, let's think, we'll take geometry, virtual reality, we'll take all of this stuff actually. We can take all of these things. Um, we can't migrate all of them. So let's go in blueprints, motion controller, pawn, right click, add asset, migrate. We'll save this level. It's going to take a lot of files with it, which is just fine. So I'll say okay. Um, I'm going to go up and I have a project that I just made called blank. It'll go into content and I'll select this folder. Everything should move over there. Similarly for the water, I'll just right click my master water uh, and migrate it. It's going to take the ripples with them to the blank folder to content and say okay. So now if I come over to my blank project, I thankfully have the blueprints and I have a motion controller. It looks like some stuff's missing, but we'll give this a shot. So there's my motion controller, same as before. I want this auto possess player zero. I don't have a navigation mesh in here, so I'm just gonna come over and type nav. I'll get the bounds volume here. I'll scale it up, it can be pretty big. And I'll move it around a little bit, just slide it over. And I have to hit P uh, to see there it is. Um, so now I can preview this and see if it's going to work. It probably won't. I don't have my input set up just yet. So you can see I, I can't control my hands and I can't teleport even though everything should be there. Oops. All right, so then what we need to do is to control um, some controls here. So under the edit project settings, we have an ability to control the input devices. And you can see here there's no binding. So right now the project doesn't know about our controllers. But thankfully, if I come back here to the one that was working, I can go to edit, project settings, same spot, and input. I can export all of these controls that are set up. So let's export these. We'll just call these VR controls. And then I'll jump back to my blank project. I can import. Now on my desktop, there's the VR controls, and we have all those controls there. Uh, so we can give it a shot. We might need to rebuild this level. I don't know that the controls will be live. Nope, not live yet. All right, so we'll cancel this. I'm going to save all. Uh, this is just called uh, uh, teleport, or let's just call this one blank too. We'll save this. Uh, I'm going to reload this level by going to recent projects, blank, and say yes, reload it. So it's going to take a second for that to just repopulate and come back. Let me close this for now. This is the, the default one, which I'll be linking at the bottom of the video here. And blank is loading up. And if everything works out here, it's, uh, it's all we'll need to do is just tele migrate everything across, place the motion controller, auto possess player zero come back to our parabolic teleporter and export the settings, then come to our blank file and import those controller settings. So if I go to content to our blank file, uh, let's try this one more time. Let's see here, it's my hands. I can see that I can move my fingers, which is a good sign. And if I use the thumb pad, I can teleport. So that's how you would go about moving the parabolic teleporter. Um, one other thing to look at, let's say I have a different height. So I'm gonna pull this level up uh, I'm going to move it over, right? So now there's a spot that I can teleport to that's at a higher plane. You can see that now this is blocking below. So let's just see, do a little experiment here. I'm going to move this bounds down. And now I can get all of that. And I'm going to make a copy of it by holding Alt and moving it up. Moving it over. Hmm. So it looks like they can't overlap each other. And I'm hoping that this one, like I wanted more ability. So this this uh, this boundary, I wanted to be able to kind of have two levels that lock. Maybe this one just needs to be up higher. There we go. So this level's up higher and I have, I have nav mesh down below and nav mesh up above. So if, let's play this again and see if I can teleport here. That's great. Can I teleport up there? And you can see that this is using a parabolic motion, so I can actually snap myself all the way up to the higher level. Oops, let's jump back a little bit. Jump back over there, and there you go.
that's how the parabolic teleporter can be helpful. Uh, the file, this file, the parabolic uh, teleporter, this is a, a 4.18.1, um, but this file is linked below.